In today's podcast, we're going to cover the last three things that uh, are going to be part of our third, our three-part series. Let me start over to hell with that. <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. In today's podcast, we're doing our third installment of 10 Myths About HIPAA. We're going to cover numbers 8, 9, and 10. So we're going to dive right into it if you missed the other podcast. You can go back and listen to the first seven on the other two podcasts. So the first one we're going to jump right into is whether or not this is true or false. HIPAA covers all PHI, no matter who possesses the information. What do you think about that, Donna? Well, hello, David. It's nice to join you today <laughs> since you jump right you in. You can make it. I'm jumping right in. We got to get it. <laughs> get her done. Okay. So I believe that is false. Why do you believe that? Because the HIPAA law applies to specific entities who are under uh, more or less the contract that is created when a a health plan or a a health provider initiates that uh, NPP, the Notice of Privacy Practices that everybody thinks of, When you say, oh, I work with HIPAA compliance. Oh, that thing I sign? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing I sign is the contract that initiates the HIPAA law. And from that point forward, everybody who has access to that information uh, are the people who are covered by HIPAA. So if that's not involved, then anybody can possess PHI and HIPAA may not be covered. There's some specific... Uh, cases where it doesn't apply, like how that they do it. Is it all private pay? Do they take insurance at all? Well, if they don't take insurance, technically HIPAA doesn't apply. But you still want to say, uh, hey, you watch it after my stuff because it could be dangerous. Now, one thing that I have seen happen from time to time, especially for IT people, is that you get caught up with the technology side and you forget that PHI exist outside of electronic format and you kind of overlook that Mm -hmm. is that something that something you still see that goes on oh yeah the resolutions the recent resolutions there are a couple big ones that had to do with paper and yes people forget about paper we uh, talk to people all the time where um you know we've had a case where people had to dive in the dumpster to get a box of paper that accidentally got thrown in the dumpster uh, thankfully they made it, they found it, everything was still in it. No one had done anything but throw it in the dumpster, but you don't want to start your Monday morning or Tuesday. Well, any morning diving in a dumpster, uh, to get some paper. And mm-hmm. it happens all the time that, yeah, technology people, especially, they just forget that paper matters and things that are coming off the printer and they're reconfiguring a printer and they just lay the paper down. Don't pay attention to it. That could be a big hole. So HIPAA covers all PHI, no matter what possess, no matter who possesses the information. We determine that's false. Correct. That is false. All right. So don't make that statement. We need the statement <laughs> is PHI, which is your protected health information, is only protected by those who fall under the HIPAA law, and that is not every single person that could see it. There you go. On to number nine. A one-hour video course is all that a compliance officer needs to implement HIPAA in any organization. Is that true or false? Mostly false. I mean, technically, uh, see, the law (laughs) just says you have to have someone in charge of privacy and security compliance that has had training. It doesn't define what training that is, and it doesn't define how long it is or where they have to get it. Nothing about that. So... You can get it from any location. It can be an hour long. But I say that even though I do this all pretty much all day, every day of my life, I have to think about these things. 
I still don't know that I know every piece of the, you know, every case or every situation that could come up in any given environment. So a single little video, uh, when I see that, yeah, we had training, somebody watched a one hour, even a three hour video on HIPAA compliance and they're a security officer. They're not taking it seriously is my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Well, we've we've discussed this before when we kind of talked about the culture of compliance that you're trying to breed within your organization, that there's no way you can create a culture if it's just a one hour video or if it's just a one day annual training. It has to be something that's that's ongoing. And honestly, if you if you expect your organization to take security and privacy seriously, whether it's around HIPAA or you know, just making sure the doors are locked at night so somebody doesn't break in. Anything, you have to do something that is a constant procedural uh, aspect so that they don't forget about it and they recognize what it is and they know how to combat that. Well, and just the job of the compliance officer to build all that. That's what they forget is technically the person that's uh, defined as the compliance officer has the ultimate responsibility for making sure that the policies and procedures are created, that they are followed and audited, and that there's regular assessments and audits that are taking place, that all of the risks that are identified that you are going to mitigate internally versus outsource that that's happening and there's audits taking place. So they're responsible for all that happening. And I just don't see how you could understand all of that or at least know how to manage all of that in a one hour video or I read the stuff online. I just, I don't see how you could do that properly, but people do. And I'm sure that uh, in many cases, uh, they're able to say that they do understand it and maybe they have exposure otherwise and they don't need it. But we're talking about the case of all, only the exposure of this one course is a, enough for it. And I, I don't even get training that's one hour each year. I get, you know, I get like 20 some hours of CEU credits to maintain my certification. So it's not something that I... I can even do my job with just one hour of video. So, And that kind of brings us to our very last. Number 10. Myth. Number 10. Or number three today. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the last one, it kind of, like I said, rolls over into this. HIPAA training requirements are met with an annual training for all employees. Is that true or false? That's another one where technically it, it's mostly false. Technically, if you're splitting hairs, the law says that you must have training for all workforce members. They have to be trained when they're hired, and then they have to have uh, regular training. So you can do it that annual training that occurs. But the uh, security rule says you have to have a security awareness program. So a security awareness program can't honestly be created and, you know, once a year you talk about it, it doesn't make people that aware. You know, it's kind of like uh, your kids. If you tell your kids to clean up their room once a year, how often are they going to clean up their room? Are they going to remember to do it every week because that's what you really want them to do? Or are they going to do it once a year when you make them do it? Mm-hmm. You know, you got a bunch of kids. Which one's going to work? <laughs> I remind them all the time and they still don't get done. <laughs> exactly. So if you don't stay on top of it and keep reminding them of things, then it just becomes something that's, you know, it, they tolerate it and it drives you crazy. But until you make them do it and keep reminding them to do it, it doesn't become a habit. Mm-hmm. You know, when there's a rule somewhere that says if, if you want to change a habit you or create a new habit, you have to do it. 30 days in a row and then it becomes a habit. So if you're not regularly having discussions about the requirements of compliance and your responsibility to protect your patients and their data and the awareness of security and why it matters that you're not just screaming out your password across the room when somebody wants to log in. My favorite gives me the 
my head just spins off just when that happens, and I've heard it happen so many times. Hey, how do you sign on to this over here? We well, use username uh, Smith and password123. <laughs> comes from the other side of the room. So. Or I'll, I'll say to, you know, the little Julie girl at the front desk, I'll say, oh, I, I've got to talk to Pam to get her username and password. Oh, I've got that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, oh, please. Really? <laughs> yeah. And Oh, or I love, yes, we, we do have separate passwords for all employees now. Okay, great. So then we don't have to worry about it. You keep them secret. Everybody doesn't know each other's password, which is the point of having unique usernames and individual passwords so that you know who did things. And they say, oh, no, no, no. We all know each other's passwords. This one's password one. That one's password two. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, God. No, that's, that's, that's not working. So part of that security awareness training is to get people to understand and think about it on a regular basis, the things that you're doing every single day matter. And if mm -hmm. you're not constantly being reminded of that, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, today, and, and this is another example of us being, you know, many people won't remember this ever being an option, but I remember never wearing a seatbelt. You know, it's just... Some cars didn't even have it, or they only had the lap belt. You remember those? Mm -hmm. So I never wore a seatbelt, and then they tried to get everybody to wear a seatbelt uh, because they finally learned that it would actually keep us from flying through the air in a wreck, and it was actually kind of helpful to wear them, and they put the uh, cross thing on, and, and, then, and then everybody said, well, I've never had to wear them before, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, and then finally, they put these little dinger things in. And I remember my grandmother said, well, I just take that thing and plug it in and put it behind me. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up. And, is that, you know, and she lived a long life, but uh, she never drove very far in any of the traffic we drove in either. So, But the whole point is, because that little dinging sound happens in your car, it makes you do it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds you to do it, and yeah, you could shut it up some other ways, but I really should put my seatbelt on. It's a security thing. It's a safety thing. So I go ahead and do it. I put my seatbelt on because the car reminds me to do it. That's security awareness. And we uh, we don't have this in our, in our show notes uh, that we're going by now. It might be in our show notes by the time we post the podcast, but I wanted to, to jump a little bit into the training aspect so that we give listeners an idea of some ways to do the training because some of the things that I have run into with clients is they, they get frustrated with the training aspect and that's when it ends up being a once a year thing because they don't know where to get the training or they're frustrated with dealing with the training or they don't really know what's out there to do the training. And so it becomes one of those things that gets put on the back burner and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need to do an annual training and then they just rush in and throw a bunch of stuff together. So let's talk a minute about some options for training that are fairly easy to implement and it doesn't have to be a whole day thing and, and all that. And the first one, I'll go ahead and take take the reins here, but the very first one I think is an absolute excellent training tool is this podcast. Help yeah. me with HIPAA.com. You know, have your employees listen to this podcast. You're looking at, you know, roughly 30 minutes and we're covering topics uh, that are, that are relevant. They're different each time. You know, we're fairly entertaining to listen to. <laughs> and you think and you, so. You, yeah. I, th I think I'm funny. That's what my <laughs> wife always says. You think you're funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, take, take your, um, your training form and, you know, feel, put that in there. You have an employee listen to it. Are you listening to it now? You know, document that this is training. This is HIPAA training. It's not just yeah. something that you're doing to pass the time as you're driving to work or whatever, uh, or torturing yourself. I don't know which, but you know, document it. This is training for you. It's training for your employees. And if you, you know, we have in a podcast come out every week, you have potentially a 30 minute training session a week that's given to you for free. So take advantage of it. Yeah, why are we doing that? Because <laughs> we're good people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a public service. Uh, yeah. No, because we have enough time that we walk into places and we're terrified because they need more training. And you're right. This is a great way to do it. And then, 
you know, there's there's on-site training where you get everybody together, but we have uh, uh, in the in my company, Card and Compliance, we've dealt with that over and over and over. Is you know, we can come in and do on-site training for the workforce. I mean, this this while many members of the workforce will get something out of these discussions you and I have that's not necessarily for all members of the workforce. So when you when you get down to all members of the workforce uh, and you're talking about from volunteers, you know, up into supervisors, you know, management and up can more than likely get something from this that's very helpful. But when you're wanting to train the workforce, you're wanting them to have things that are relevant to their jobs. So if you're going to just sit there and give them – you know, there's some of this online training that just explains what the law says. That's it. That's all it does. And it doesn't put it in real world environments and scenarios that um, make it relevant to their jobs. And so that's why in the training content that we build, we have a portal where you can log in because most people want that uh, ability to do the training whenever they have the employees available, so you're not having to try to get everybody in one place, especially when you have these huge organizations. So video training is very valuable, but you also want video training that actually helps. And so we've spent a lot of time trying to find ways to do that, and we're even looking at uh, gamification of HIPAA training, which is so exciting to turn HIPAA into a game. Yes, I know. And it's not Hungry Hungry Hippo. You know how much I hate all the things that make HIPAA and Hippo together. But that's my personal opinion, that seeing a picture of a hippo and a tutu, um, <laughs> it, it only encourages people to misspell hippo. HIPAA. <laughs> God almighty, help me. See, why? this is why I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, the two Ps, yeah, I got you. Now you're with me. <laughs> so uh, the important part of the training is to remind and to provide that, what do you call it, the positive reinforcement of good habits to mm -hmm. keep away from bad habits and to, you know, think. Because if you're not making it something, people become robotic in their jobs. You know, it's I'm going to do this and I'm in a hurry or so and so needs this right now. So I don't have time to review that one last thing or this email just came in and oh, my God, it's scaring me to death. Let me click that link. So it's not just training on HIPAA. It's security training. So it's not about the law. It's about remembering things that can uh, break in. It's things uh, that you can do wrong with the paper. It's things you have to worry about when you're talking to people. Um, it's about making sure that people have training that resonates with them. Otherwise, that just becomes one more thing I have to do for my job. And not everybody is you know, conducive to training. Some people are just going to blow it off no matter what you do, and you know that. But the ones that hear it over and over and over are going to watch the ones that aren't paying attention and say, hey, somebody, you're messing up. Uh, you know, Or at least whisper to somebody until it finally gets back to someone in control. Because it's that person, and that's the thing that we preach about training, is that breaches and improper disc disclosures of patient information, the things that go wrong, if you will, all of that involves people. People mm -hmm. are hackers. People make mistakes. People are snooping. People are nosy. People are... Uh, criminal. So it's all of those things are about people. And if you don't train the people, it really doesn't matter what we do. And we talked about that before, like an encrypted laptop where you give it to the person and then the person puts the encryption key with the laptop. There is absolutely nothing from a technical standpoint we can do. Right. Or an administrative, because once that person has put it with the laptop, they are totally not paying attention to why you encrypted it in the first place. They just see it mm -hmm. as a long password they got to remember. So it doesn't matter to them why it was initially encrypted because they clearly didn't have enough security awareness training. 
And another thing you can do along with training uh, is, as we talked about in episode four, when we were discussing, you know, how to do HIPAA, you know, one bite at a time, you can do uh, what I like to call five minute Fridays. You know, every Friday you're going to take five minutes, cover one single short topic on, on compliance, you know, whether it's, you know, password management or, you know, what information should you or not give out over the telephone or, you know, what should you do with a fax once you're done with it? Just real simple, easy stuff. You don't have to come up with an entire training program or a mm. training day or slides and PowerPoints and handouts. You don't have to do all that. Mm-hmm. Five minutes. And, you know, you did mention the video training. We actually have a killer video training series that you and I put together with the help of um, Bigger Brains. Dot com, which is really nice too. That would be that, bigger um, dash brains. Bigger dash brains dot com. Um, so that would be a, a great resource as well. And that's and that's more of something that's for the entire workforce, wouldn't you nah, say? I don't know. Well, it talks about the law and explains what you have to do to have HIPAA in your business. And I see it uh, more as a compliance officer training, but you can call it workforce training and we can just <laughs> agree to disagree. <laughs> well, it's not that I disagree. It's that some people have a mindset like me where don't just tell me what to do, but tell me why we're doing it. And I think yeah. that's the reason why I think that resource is good for the entire organization is because, you know, telling me to make sure I don't, um, put my encryption key with my laptop. Okay, that's great, but tell me why that's an issue. Right, I mean, that's part to, of to, you, to you and I, training. yeah, to you and I, you know, we understand that, but to somebody else, they might not understand, okay, what's the harm in me doing this? You know, I think a lot of people miss that because I walk into people's practices all the time and see passwords taped to their monitors, so they they don't get it for some <laughs> reason. I through that. <laughs> <clears throat> so... You know, I think that knowing why you're doing certain things uh, is is valuable to some people. Some people don't have that type of mindset where they really care. They'll do what you say. Other people are like me and they're, okay, I understand why you're telling me to do it. But, you know, tell me a little bit more about the reasons around that. And I appreciate that more and I understand the end result of what they're going for, not just what you're telling me to do, but the end result of that. Well, and that, that leads me to one of my favorite password stories is that the, the, the play a client that I'd worked with for a long time and I was coming by there to do some work and uh, go through the you know because you're going through all the little offices and cubby holes where people are at and they, we go through this one room and it's got like four or five people in it and in the middle of the room there's a bulletin board and it's got a list of usernames and passwords that have to do with websites that they have to use. Now, granted, that is a problem, but there's other ways to solve it than to put it on a piece of paper up <laughs> on the bulletin board in the middle of the room so everybody can quickly go look at it. I get it why you made it convenient. However, you know what I did when I walked in and saw it, right? You snatched it down. I walked up there and put my <laughs> face right in front of it and just stood there staring at it. And uh, the supervisor, the manager guy that was with me, he he turns to the room and he goes, "I told y'all she was coming." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna violate HIPAA until somebody that we know is gonna recognize that comes in. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like mom and, and dad leave, are here. Hide the booze, you know. <laughs> yeah, when you leave, we'll go back to doing. <laughs> uh, but I mean the yeah I mean you bring up a good point that we've talked about before that security and convenience really don't go hand in hand in most cases. No, you're going to be inconvenienced in order to do the security. But another thing that I was you know that example is they didn't understand why they shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, they just knew that I was coming. They were supposed to hide all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, wait. Now, granted, this was. Years ago, when HIPAA first started out, and it's before all the changes with enforcement and all that kind of stuff, is when no one was really looking, and you know, it wasn't taken as seriously as it is today. And that, you know, that occurred. It, but even then, I'm the one that's going in, and they're like, "Look, it's, it's so inconvenient, but we hide it when you come in. Aren't you glad?" <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> well. They obviously recognized that it was a problem, 
Well, but only when you were around. <laughs> they knew I didn't like it, and that's all that mattered. No, no one else seemed to care, but I didn't like it. So. <laughs> well, so that concludes our 10 myths that we covered. And today we'll just recap what we did today. We covered that it's a false statement that HIPAA covers all PHI no matter who possesses the information. It does absolutely matter who possesses it. Some people can actually have PHI, as we call it, and it not HIPAA doesn't uh, apply to them. So there's no violation there. The other thing is, uh, you know, a one-hour video course is not necessarily all that a compliance officer would need to implement HIPAA. It's probably going to take a little more than that to really understand what needs to happen within that organization and then put that into practice. And then we spent a pretty good bit of time talking about the training aspect and that HIPAA training requirements are somewhat met with an annual training for employees, but it's probably not the best practice to follow. And, and to, if to, it makes more sense to go into something that's more of a long-term training and, and doing something on an ongoing basis, whether that's weekly or monthly or whatever you decide to do, but definitely making it more frequent so that you do create what we call the culture of compliance. So that is it in the nutshell. We covered all 10 of them in the past three podcasts. Yay, we're done. Let's go on to another topic. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.